What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks so much for being here, for being subscribed. If you're not, go ahead and hit that button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit that like button. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into this holy mess. All right, Cat Williams, everybody and their mama, grandmama, granddaddy <laughs> has been talking about Cat Williams. And he actually did another interview on Willie D's channel. I, I have not watched it. And I'll be honest, I just... I, I, I don't even know if I want to go there. Willie D, it's not that I have anything against him. He just drags on and is so slow. So when I heard that he did an interview on his channel, I was reluctant. And I'm like, oh, well, of all people, why? <laughs> why him? So if I listen to it, I'm probably going to have to speed it up because I, he's just, he drags on. Anyway, I digress. Jamal Bryant, the pastor, Jamal Bryant of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, took the church over after Bishop Eddie Long passed away. And this has been some years since he's taken over. Well, we know how sometimes these churches, they will use situations and emotions to play on the heartstrings of people to get people to give their money. It is a business and that is what they do. And they will use the Lord's name and say how the Lord said this and God said that and whatever to get people to dig deep and to give usually above what they're able to afford to do. Because let's just be honest, if it were up to a vast majority of the people who were going to the churches, not saying they would not give, but they probably wouldn't give as much as they do. So a lot of them feel compelled to give. And what I like about when I do attend, where I attend, there's no pressure. It's like, give if you want to, give if you can. Don't allow people to use scriptures to force you to give or to scare use scare tactics to make you feel like if you don't give, you're going to be cursed with a curse because you're supposed to give your tithes and your offerings and whatever. So to hear Pastor Jamal Bryant use Cat Williams <laughs> to get the people to give to his church, I feel is a bit comical, but it is obviously a shame in itself. I want to play this clip and then I'm going to continue with my commentary. And I also want to give credit where credit is due. I did get this from Tough News TV on YouTube. I've been subscribed to his YouTube channel for several years now. And he's definitely been going in over the past year about Kim Porter and how she may have potentially lost her life, how Sean P. Diddy Puffy Love Combs may have had some affiliation with her no longer being here. And as we know, when the situation came out with Cassie, he was really, really sharing a whole lot more, but this isn't something that's new to him. So I just want to give him credit where credit is due. And I'm going to put a link to the full video in the description box so that you can check it out. Now, the context of the clip that you're going to see have a lot of people feeling that, oh, Lord, here's another pastor. And these pastors have been doing this. This is nothing new. But here we go again, begging for money, trying to manipulate your church out of their hard earned money. Now, we're also going to touch base on the fact that Cat Williams has recruited Tori Hart to go on tour with him, the ex-wife of Kevin Hart. And a lot of people feel that that's some shady business right there. Some people are for it because of the way that Kevin Hart did Tori once he got to Hollywood. And then a lot of people are saying that, OK, if you're going to do this, then drop his last name. And some people are also saying that even though Kevin's your ex, you should show some type of respect and humility and not go on tour with Kat. But anyway, guys, let's kick this thing off. I'm going to start off with the Jamal Bryant thing, and then the clips will follow in a row and fall like dominoes. You know how we do over here. And then I'll be back to close the video. Anybody that's got Wi-Fi saw the Cat Williams interview. Anybody that's got Wi-Fi. And uh, I, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. A, a lot of them that he talked about are my friends. One of them is my mentor. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it at all. There's only one part of the interview uh, that I want to talk about. Start the video now. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody just showed up and gave him a little blessing? If you was actually just trying to help people, you would. People know that's how I pay my tithes. If I got paid $100,000 to be at your city... I'm going to take 10000 of that and put it in your homeless area. 
Not because I got to. Because you gave me a hundred racks to come to your little rinky-dink town. Who would I be to not pay my tithes back to your town? That's how I got in this position. This is the only clip I can show you with no cussing in it. <laughs> yeah. He gonna go to another town and tithe to that city that he don't live in. Because he says, I gotta give back to the source of where it is that I receive. I'm telling you, when you're receiving a blessing in this place, this is where you ought to be sowing it. This is where it is that you ought to be planting it, believing uh, that after not many days, it's going to come right back to you. I, I want you to give greater than you gave last year, because I'm believing you're going to receive greater than you received on last year. Shop. All right, guys. So you heard that. You know, he's saying, I want you to give greater this year than you gave last year. Because I believe that God is going to bless you greater. Not the people themselves who would be giving greater than what they gave last year. I just, I'm just so over the shenanigans when it comes to these people that are using wordplay and manipulative tactics to get people to give. Because let's think about it. The majority of the people that go to churches are women, right? I am a woman. I definitely can say that, yeah, I am emotional. There are times that, like, I know I cannot watch those SPCA commercials where they're showing the animals and chains and outside freezing in the cold and whatever. I can't watch those commercials where they're showing the disabled children for, what I don't know what it is, muscular dystrophy or whatever. I can't watch those St. Jude commercials where they're showing the children with cancer. The, but I get why they're doing it. They're doing it to get people to feel sorry. Not saying that you shouldn't feel sorry. And a lot of women, they give out of their emotions. And so when you have people that are going to churches and you're going at least once a week, if not sometimes you're going multiple times a week, Think about how much money these people are giving every time they come, but yet you're paying your rent once a month, you're paying your mortgage once a month. If you have a mortgage, you're paying your car payment once a month, you're paying your utility bills once a month, you're not paying them every week. I I'm just saying, and to use, they, they have, I guess they have to come up. They feel like they, sh I should say, they have to come up with these tactics to keep, to get people to dig out of their pockets and to give over and above what they can actually afford to do or maybe even want to do when the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, not a pressured giver. If you don't feel like this is something that you want to do, you shouldn't do it. And two, he, meaning Cat Williams, he's talking about tithing in a way that I believe that it really should be. And it doesn't have to be 10%. It could be less. It could be more. It's based on what someone is able to do. But I do believe that giving directly to those in need versus giving it to a source like a Jamal Bryant's church, hoping that it's going to get to where you, you would want it to be, it's a risk. But a lot of people do it. But then you see people like him, they're living extravagantly, they're living exceptionally well, more so over and above the people that are going to the churches that they're teaching and preaching at. So it's like, why not be like Cat Williams, like he said, but give directly to people if you're able to do that, that you see a need versus giving it to his church, you know? So people just have to be smarter than that, especially in these days and times, because I don't believe that God himself needs our money. It's not like people are giving their money to these churches and then at the end of the the program the service or whatever they want to call it they're going outside they're lifting up all of the money that was given <laughs> to god and now a lot of it is electronic so it's not even cash anymore they're lifting it up to god on high and then god stretches his hand down and snatches up the money and is like thanks for the offering <laughs> be blessed i mean and listen i'm not trying to be blasphemous or anything like that so don't take it the wrong way but i'm just really being real like seriously the the people that get their emotions played on for them for the most part 
are the women and a lot of the churches are more so filled with women than men. And there is a reason for that. There really is. I I learned it a long time ago. So I just found it very funny that he was able to take from what Cat Williams said to try to flip it and reverse it and make it out for his congregation and those who have come to visit or whatever to say, you need to be like Cat Williams, you need to tithe and you need to do greater because this is where you receive your blessing. So you need to give to this place. Who's to say they receive their blessing from there? Not saying they may not have heard a word every now and then that may have inspired them, motivated them or encouraged them, but that doesn't mean that they should have to give their money to him and to his church, you know? Because a lot of the people that do that, they don't even help the people that they see every day. And I don't think that that is God's word either because the Bible says charity begins at home and then spread abroad. And there are people who will give a lot of their money to the churches and they don't even take care of their own household the way that they should. So let's just be real. It's a huge unjust balance. There's a lot of unjust things going on. And there are a lot of things definitely that are being revealed. The Bible says judgment will begin in the house of God. And I believe also those that claim to be houses of God that are not really houses of God, but they are using it as it is such and it's for their own benefit remember in the bible when it talked about jesus went into the temple and turned over the tables of the money changers i just really see a lot of that going on in these days and time and so when i heard about this i just wanted to talk about it and get your thoughts so let me know what you think about it in the comment section thanks guys so much for being here for liking and subscribing i'm beth just being beautifully honest so until the next time i just wanted to keep it brief beautiful and now i'm gonna say bye <laughs>